Welcome to the 21 Report. I'm Frank Pesci, and I'm here with Zan Perion. Hello. <laughs> How you doing? I'm author, speaker, relationship expert, and CEO of? Arza Murata. Arza Murata. Great to be here with you, my brother. Arzamurata.com. Come find me. <laughs> awesome. How you doing? I'm fantastic. My voice is a little scratchy because I did three talks over the last two days, and I just did an interview before, so, but I'm good. How did the events go so far? Um, I think it's, it's going great. I've had some, I, I've, I've had some great discourses with some great men. I think the real thing, like I've been, I've done a lot of speechifying in my 20 years of doing this, and I've done a lot of preaching, you could say, right? And, uh, but where the real conversation happens and the real understanding and the real uh, camaraderie comes is in the gatherings. And so I've been hanging out every night. That's why my throat is gone too, because I've been talking till three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning with the guys, yeah. Interesting, you're joining us from Romania. Yes, I'm Canadian, but I live in Bucharest, yes. How's life in Bucharest these days? Uh, perfect for me. Yeah? I've, I've shifted into a new phase in my life. I'm getting old now. <laughs> and uh, I shifted into a new phase where I, I used to travel and speak and, and do conferences and my own conferences all over the world. And now I just sit in Romania in my rocking chair and I'm surrounding myself with books. It's getting higher and higher and higher, which I love. That's the phase, you know? Well, what brought you to the 21 convention? All the way, halfway across the world at least, right? Well, I came in 2015 and 2017 and Anthony said, you know, we want to have this kind of this alumni thing. You want to come? And I said, sure. I'll go in front of any audience and I accept all invitations if possible. It's my philosophy. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of the same way, man. Yeah. I'm, ha I'm happy to do it you because you're fulfilling your purpose and your role in life, exactly. right? Exactly. You're, if you're, if you're, if you're setting your, if you're, you're doing your devotions in the morning, which you know people call meditation or setting intention into the universe, whatever, if you're doing that at all, if you're trying to have a, a, a purpose-driven day uh, with intention and somebody invites you to something, you have to go. <laughs> that's, what you, that's what you're asking for, right? Right. How old were you when you felt that you discovered your purpose? Oh my goodness, I never discovered my purpose. Yeah, is that true? Yeah. Okay. I really, I don't think we have to, well, that's another conversation, but I think uh, Joseph Campbell had the proper uh, alignment with this. Instead of find your purpose, which is, a, which is something that people try and do, I think more it's like follow your bliss, what, what leads you down a path of light, what, makes, what, what invites you forward. You know? So the journey more, more or yeah, less. Yeah, as opposed to the, being driven by obligations and stuff, to be, to be drawn towards something, which is what we're longing for, you know? Me, myself, I have been somebody that's always been, I'd beat myself up, let's say, if I felt like I diverged from my purpose or diverged from the journey in pursuit of my purpose. Right. I think that that might be a common frustration among men, particularly in the times that we're living in yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. Uncertainty on the horizon and men becoming less valuable to society. Yeah. Right? Like, well, I mean, like, young men are unmoored. They're, you know, they're, un they, they're unguided. I mean, like, even in, in the Bible, the, the 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 Israelites clamored for a king. We need we need, we're we're, we're un, unrooted here. We need somebody to to be a king over us. And so they you know Samuel got Saul right, the first king, and uh, because they felt they needed some they needed that benevolent king over them. And I think that uh, the guidance that, and men don't have a message, young men you know. So I think uh, there's a lot of. Uh, a lot of uh, unrest in the hearts of young men for certain. I've well, been, I've been doing it for 20 years. I've been talking to men for many, many years and I've seen it, how it's evolved, how it's changed. I mean, you know, we had, we had 10 years, imagine this, I'm 58. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, get All my right, wheelchair. I'll just sit back and listen. Man. <laughs> I'm 58 years old, uh, so I've seen some things. And, uh, and when I was meeting women back in my 20s, it's analog. There's no digital dating, right? right. There's no YouTube videos, no dating coaches, no programs, no nothing. You had to straighten your tie and get up your nerve and try and remember her number if you didn't have a pen, right? Yep. <laughs> and, uh, and we've had 10 years now of Tinder. I'm, I'm approximating. I'm and they yeah, say three years of pandemic. So that entire group of people that are, that are coming to age has never had an analog experience. They're, their dating is digitally based. So they've never had that, you know, that feeling of trying to go forward and, and, and putting myself with, with intention and authenticity in the world, I think. So it's changed. 
is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> it's changed from when I was first doing it. Absolutely. And I, what you said when we were talking about purpose is that you see a lot of unrest in yeah. young men today. Yeah. So as a relationship expert, you know, yeah, dating yeah. guy, what do you tell these guys? Um, well, I think we're focusing on the wrong things. That's the truth. And that's, that's why, I mean, I, I mean, I can go into it. Uh, we, my thesis is this, and I really believe this with all my heart. My book, The Alabaster Girl, if you say, what is that book about? It's a book about beauty. And I think in our modern society, our modern age, the, the unrest and the and dissatisfaction and anger that we, have, that we feel is because we've turned our face away from beauty. We no longer contemplate beauty. The Bible says, whatsoever things are lovely, think on these things. When I was a kid, you'd do your daily devotions, you'd read a Bible verse, you'd sing, sing a little song, and it sets your intention for the day, right? Your, your tone for the day. Now, you scroll social media and you watch all the, the, the unrest, the, the trouble out there, that sets your, your tone for the day. So my advice to young men... Doom scrolling. Yeah. Aristotle said the only life worth living is one of contemplation. I think that that's what's missing, to contemplate beauty. And where is it? Because beauty exists independent of us. I think the beauty is uh, a real physical thing as in metaphysics, as in, as in uh, electromagnetic physics. I think it's real. I think it's a, like gravity. And, um, and I think that you look, at, you look at art. Art used to be about the artist. I mean, about the, about the art and giving you, a, you know, a, a picture into something that makes you contemplate and transcend it. Art has a, a beauty in art has, a, has a, con a, a way of dawning on you, you know, because you're in contemplation, you have to think about it. And, and uh, art is now about the artist. How can I shock you? It says, look at me, look at me. Architecture, how can I shock you now? As opposed to, you know, the golden ratio and, and uh, blending into centuries of, 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 of buildings and stuff like that. So art, architecture, relationships, politics, it's all... I really do think our deficits because we've turned our face away from beauty. And that's what I think. Beauty is not a, at the forefront anymore like it used to be for the, for the Greeks, right? Beauty, right, right. truth, goodness. Have you been here for the entire event? I, it's I have busy, been busy, a lot has been going I on. I have been here for the entire event, but I haven't been in any speakers. Okay. I haven't listened to any speakers. The reason I ask is because there is a prevailing consensus around here, uh, at least at this table as interview speakers, about two main themes. Okay. Spirituality, yeah. spiritual focus and growth, yeah. and art. Art has come ah. up several times. Okay. Yeah. As a person who's, who's you know, been in business a long time, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, lived a long time, yeah. seen a lot of things, what do you make of those trends? Does that predict anything for you? Well, I do, th yeah, I, I think so. Um, Nietzsche said, God is dead, and everybody knows that quote, right? That's the, and, and he was a staunch atheist, and said, yeah, Nietzsche, yeah, he's celebrating atheism. But they missed the rest of the quote, which is, God is dead, God will remain dead, and we have killed him. And what he was really saying was, good luck. Because you strip out God and the transcendent, even though he was an atheist, the concept of the transcendent out of society, and this is what you get, what we have today. You know, we've lost, we've lost the, the, the anchoring um, of, of, of a good message of a community. Like Christianity is what the, the West is built on. And to strip it away, whether you're, whether you're an atheist or not, you have to believe this, to strip out that, that, that sense of family and, 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 and home and, and community and responsibility you know, we used to have responsibility and we, duty was a word we used to use. My duty to my country, to my family, to, that's gone. It's now like, look at me and what can you do for me? And that's an art that's turned her face away. I could, I could go on and on and on. So When I was in the army, there was a popular cadence. Uh, duty, honor, country, I'd give my life. Before that, it was uh, duty, God, and country, and, I'd and, give my life. And what do they have now? I don't even know. Right? Who knows, right? <laughs> but but yeah. like you said, the West was built on these ideals, yes. and it was ingrained uh, in who we were. It was a matter-of-fact 
of our society, Correct. which is what allowed us to be prosperous. And whether or not you conform to Christian ideals from a doctrine perspective, or even if you don't want to believe it, At it all, yeah. still provides guardrails for society that creates law and order that's and morality. Correct. And, it's, and, and, and if you strip it out, uh, good luck. And that's what Nietzsche was saying. You know? Yeah. So we've had this, you know, the, uh, we, we, we've turned our face away from anything that, you, that I would call the transcendent, you know, yeah. which I call beauty, which is the Holy Spirit in my mind. When you, know, when you, when you look at a, a painting or you look at the face of your beloved, that's my, that's my message, you know, to, to, be, to people. It's like, this is not your significant other, your partner. This is your beloved. Reclaim that word. It's a biblical word, but it's real. Because when you have the, the feeling that this is my beloved, then something shifts in you and something shifts in the partner. 100%. You can feel that. You feel that it's, it's a perspective, a conscious choosing of a different way to look at life and, and to look at your partner. This is my beloved. She can feel that. Talking as a man, you know. Yeah, and even more so, as you behold beauty, what you manifest is love. That's correct. Right? Yeah. If I behold the news all day, negative, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to be short-tempered, I'm going to be annoyed, I'm going to be frustrated, I'm yeah. going to be... You're going to feel it. Right? Yeah, but yeah. if I behold beauty, like, and I'm just yeah. taking what you're giving me, right? Yeah. Um, then I manifest love yeah, and my interactions. And I'm not talking about, oh, we should be all nice guys and all rosy, the, the country's all rosy and, you know, everything's all... I get it. There's a real, there's a real uh, antagonistic, warm, wet blanket that's hovering over the earth, and and there's no light for people to turn to, you know. So you've got to, you've got, but you've got to seek it. You've got to. Guys say to me all the time, say, "What you say, Zan? You, Zan, you say, head toward the light and only the light. Contemplate the things that are beautiful. What if there is no light, right? What if there is no light? Then you have to be the light. And I think you know they're talking about the patriarchy a lot here, and I think. What's missing in the hearts of men is the idea that it's incumbent upon them to, to, to set the tone of how they want their life to be, you know? So, uh, in, in other words, you choose, it, it, it's, it's, when we were little boys, if we skinned our knee or were hungry, we'd run to mom or dad, or we could run to somebody, and at some point that went away. Now it's on you. Mm. you. You have to run to you. If you skin your knee, you're hungry. You know what I mean, and and there's a, that anger, like there's this, this idea of toxic masculinity, which I don't buy, and I think that's a sin that society is saying to us that masculinity is toxic. I think masculinity is is divine, God given. We're created that way, you know, and uh, and to say that it's a sin, like men are, uh, the, the tone is that men are are one step away from being a rapist. You know, if with take some guardrails out and they'd be a rapist. Or if they walk too slowly past the playground, yeah, there's a pedophile there. And that's wrong. That's a sinful thing to say. I really do think so. That's, that's, it's wrong. So it, I'm a crusader against that. And the thing is this, you know, the, the idea of the, the masculine, uh, masculine, masculinity is not toxic, it's absent. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. That's the message, right? Amen. And, Right? Yeah. It's absent. And so, so you have this, this anger. And, I'll, and, and, and my metaphor is this. You've got a cave here, okay? And the caveman's outside the cave, and, the, and, and his loved ones are in, behind him inside the cave. Okay? And he's fighting a saber-toothed tiger with a stick. That's all he's got. And he's going to get hurt. But, he's, but he, he has the capacity to, to do his best to defend and protect what he loves home. Right? And, and his family. And he has this ability to go out there and, and he's got danger in his heart. He's got the, 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 he has the capacity to destroy, okay? Which modern man doesn't have. Well, they do, but I'll, I'll, let me explain this. So he's out there and he's attacking this tiger, etc. And where it goes wrong is when that anger that is in the heart of men, which is a good thing, that ability to destroy and to, and to protect and, and that great energy, that great masculine strength, is turned inward towards the cave. Then you get spousal abuse, molesting children, school shootings, incels, that anger's turned in and not out. And that's my metaphor where, where we're gone. <laughs> Dude, I'll tell you what, that, that is eerily frightening and scary and I can see very clearly how that metaphor is true in a lot of ways. Yeah, right. 
So men need a place to direct that energy that is productive. Correct. We need a venue. We need a challenge. We need an opportunity. Something to look forward to. We need to be purpose driven. We yes. need to be on assignment. Hundred percent. If you have nothing, to, you know, this miasma of depression and stuff that's blanketing the earth is because people have nothing to look forward to. What a thought, you know. Yeah. And I and I and my message to men is I say, what exists because of you? Pause and think about that, as opposed to what can I get? And, you know, what exists because of you? Because you're on this earth. What what? You know, and and I really do believe that um, it, it's purpose driven. You're you're driven. To, you're called. You're called. This is a calling for men. My message that I that I speak about, what I wrote in the Alabaster Girl, this is a call. I think <laughs> I really believe it. I believe with all my heart that there's a, there's there's a call, and I really have a lot of faith in men. I don't have and in women too. I believe in women. I believe in men. And I don't, I don't wander into the into the the social issue discourse at all. I never talk about feminism. In Twenty years, never talk about pornography. Never talk about gender fluidity. All these things, and I get it. It's there. It's impacting everybody's life. I get it. But there's enough voices. I want to talk about this concept of let's reclaim the Holy Spirit and, and the idea of beauty in our life. It's wonderful. How long ago did you write your book? How long? Yeah, like when did you first publish? Two thousand thirteen. Okay, two thousand thirteen. Yeah, and I and at least for myself, when I go look for a book on Amazon or something, I always look at the published date to see if the information uh, is up to date and accurate. Yeah, yeah. Right, not to say that time necessarily makes things obsolete. Yeah, I'm just curious to know if you have any updates that you would add to the book, or if you're well, views... I'm writing. I, I'm writing a book right now, and I've been struggling with it because I'm not very pro prolific, and I and the Alabaster Girl was a book about women written to women. And I wrote into there why, I, I explained to women in this book, or the guy did, I did, abstracted it from myself, there's a guy in the book. <laughs> and he basically is explained to women why they respond to certain men and not others. What does he do and say that they respond to? So basically that's what the, the premise of the book. And that came out of my years of experience and struggling and trying to figure things out with women. So that came out of my heart. It took me 10 years to write and I didn't read another book while I was writing it. And now I'm trying to write the second book and it's the concept of what is a life well lived? What is what, my thesis, which we've turned our face away from beauty. How can we restore that in our hearts and minds? Um, what is the creative process? Like where does that come from? Where does the inspiration come from? And what, you know, I'm writing about all these different things and I have, it doesn't come from my experience. It, I'm, I, so I'm reading, you know, I'm going back to literature and stories and and philosophies and stuff like that because that's not my experience. But I want to write around. I want to write about beauty and how it can restore our societies and our faith and our and everything. But I have no. I I can't make a definition of beauty. If all the artists and scientists and physicists and you know and and alchemists in the history could never define beauty, who do I think I am? But I can certainly write around it. You know, try okay. and circle it. Well, your book flew off the table, as you know, it was very popular. You haven't been here since 2017. That's true. Do you think it's important for men to attend the 21 Summit? And and now it's a summit, so there are women here at the 21 yeah, Summit no, as well. I do think it's important. I think that what we're missing in this modern age for certain, and if somebody, I think you were saying it, you saw the guy shaking hands and having, hey, how's your year been? And that, yep. that sense of camaraderie and gathering that we used to do. We used to gather around the, around the fire to tell the stories of the day. That's missing. That's why men are unmoored. A, a good part of it is because they have, they don't shake hands and say, you know, they don't come together and break bread. Yes. Like we used right, to. Right, right, And right. that's a real, because you don't need to. You got Zoom and you got, you know, Facebook and stuff like that. You don't need to. But, I mean, I have a, a membership called the Amirati and I have a conference I do twice a year in Bucharest. We just had it two weeks ago, and I had like you know, 60, 70 guys coming from around the world. And we, and we have, like this, we have speakers, and we have, we have a lot of fun. And I've known some of these guys, and they've been part of my membership for 15 years. And you see, them every, you see them twice a year, hey, how you doing? I was in Bali, I was in Colombia, and I, now they're here. Shake their hand again, and, and you know, and, and, and they stay, they come for the weekend, but they come days early, and they stay days later, because there's a real celebration of coming together like we used to do to congregate 
into, into fellowship. Fellowship is another word we don't use anymore, right? Mm -hmm. uh, beloved fellowship, all the devotion, all these words that, we, that are, have gone from us. And if we reclaim these words and start to use them, we'll feel it. Love it. <laughs> Zan, where can people find you? Um, I'm on zanperian.com and arzamarada.com. Spelled like it sounds, arzamarada. Uh, Alabastagirl.com. Spell it out. Spell okay. Arzamarada is A R S A M O R A T A. Okay, very it's good. Fake Latin for this. <laughs> out of the, but if you want a copy of my book signed by me, because I've, I've signed like thousands of copies by hand and sent them out in the mail, I've probably done 5,000 copies that have, that have signed. And I've still got a couple uh, or thousand or so books in Romania that are printed there. And every week we send out signed copies. So if you want a signed copy of my book, it's free. It's my gift to you. You just have to pay for the shipping and the cost. Basically, you cover the cost. Go to alabastergirl.com. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. And I'll, send you, I'll sign it and send it to you. Awesome. Well, for the 21 Report, I'm Frank Pesci with Zan Parion. Thanks for joining us. Zan, thank you. Thank you.